Anna Yeager Brightfield. I'm the other half of Redland Cotton, and I thought it was about time that I got in front of the camera and talked to you guys a bit about what I do as opposed to being out in the cotton field. I am not a farmer. I live in Nashville, Tennessee with my husband and my dog, Cotton. And I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the inspiration behind the business as well as our inspiration in creating these sheets and where we are in the process now. So, as far as the inspiration behind the company itself, it's actually a very funny story. Um, my dad, who's been farming cotton since the 80s, um, has recently gotten on Instagram and last fall when he was ginning his 2015 crop, posted a photo of the ginning process to Instagram and my aunt commented, love the logo, would love some sheets made from that good looking North Alabama cotton. And so ever since that Instagram post, the wheels have been turning and we kind of haven't looked back since. Um, so that is truly the inspiration behind the company and obviously we've been working towards it and, <laughs> and um, creating and building on that idea but it's kind of funny and ironic that it came from an Instagram post and I think that's why we try to build on social media and interact with people on social and online because it creates such a community and you can get so much inspiration from other people. So, I mean, we love hearing from you. Every time you comment or leave a message on the website, it's coming to me and I love seeing it all. And if there's ever a question about farming that I personally can't answer, then I'll refer back to my brothers and my dad. But I wanted to talk about the inspiration behind the sheets themselves. When we started this journey, we knew we wanted to do something different. So we were trying to think, you know, what is so personal in a sheet? You know, we wanted to create something that was good and old school and nothing like what's out there currently on the market. And one of our good family friends had just tons of these beautiful heirloom linens from the 1920s in their house. And they brought us one flat sheet. And my parents and I met midway between Alabama and Tennessee at a Cracker Barrel and looked at it and decided that this was it. And this was the construction and what we wanted to recreate. It had such a good feeling, such good texture and strength to the fabric. Um, and that's what we decided we wanted to do. So we sent this sheet to Cotton Incorporated. They broke it down, analyzed the thread count, um, how it would have been finished, and then we set out to recreate this sheet. So again, thread count, size of the thread, and into the way that it's finished, and even taking cues from just the lace on the edges. We are really looking to recreate this 1920s feel and feeling because it was such a wholesome time. And I mean, I know that it was the roaring 20s and all of that, so, but when you think about homesteaders and you think about the South and um, women who really loved doing their laundry and taking pride in it. It's a really beautiful time to reference back to. So wanted to show you guys some some of the pillowcases that we were able to take from our friend's storage and borrow from her. Um, and obviously all of this is like beautiful hand done work. And we, we can't do hand done work, but we can try our best to replicate what we can. Um, obviously, like, this is really beautiful lace. I don't know if you can see. Um, but we wanted to, to give that feeling. And this one has really 
beautiful, tiny little hem stitching. And so just from even looking at that hem stitching, we decided we had to do a hem stitch on one of our sheets, the Redland Classic sheet. Um, so that's our inspiration behind the sheets themselves. Um, and now I want to talk about where we are in the process. If you read the blog at all, you've seen that we've been to South Carolina. We have seen our cotton be spun into yarn. And so they let us take a little bit home. Um, and this is our yarn, a little, a little sample. Um, and then we're currently in the weaving process. So we went again to South Carolina. It's a huge textile hub. And we were able to take home just a little sample of the gray goods off of the loom. And wanted to show you all that. This is, this is a little sampling of the fabric. And obviously it's you know, still has its starch on it from the weaving process, but you can still see the little flecks and it really, you can get the feel and texture of cotton in these sheets. It's not combed, it's not a sateen. You can feel the texture and that was something that was very important to us as well. And we were going to take so much time and thought and effort into how we grow our cotton, then we wanted you to be able to feel it. Like there's no reason to hide or mask it at all. Um, so we're waiting on the first 5,000 yards to be finished and then we will send it to finishing where they will bleach some of it, leave some of it natural, but give it a good washing and a good softening. And then we'll head on to cut and sew. Um, so that's that's all I have for you. I'm glad to be on camera again. My name is Anna, and I'd love to hear from you.